Hi, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photography talks. So today I want to talk about composition. Specifically, I always have described a good composition as being a, a strong foreground, a strong background, and nothing else. If you can get that, working on the street sometimes is not the easiest thing to do. But if you can get that, so while I was in Los Angeles a month ago, a couple weeks ago, I went to a meetup with photographers who were doing street down in downtown LA, and I thought, oh, this will be good. I'll meet some photographers. I'll talk shop. I'll go out and take some pictures. And then, for me, it's hard to work when there are a lot of people all in a pack. I don't really understand how you can do street in a group like that. So I really just kind of chatted with them and used it as an experience to meet people. And, and at one point, they went into this little alley. And since it was a Sunday morning, it was kind of a closed bunch of businesses. It was called St. Vincent Court. And it's a really interesting, colorful little court because it has like a feeling of a, of almost like a, like a set, like, a, like an old facade of, of a set. And, and, and they went in there and, and they were photographing in there. And so I'll put this in the links below, but this photograph is of them. And I turned my camera on them because I needed a foreground. Everybody else was shooting the elements of the court. And to me, the element that made it work is people engaged in that space. And the people who were at the far left of that frame, they were kind of bunched up in my point of view. And the three in the right and the center were nicely posed, looking up and taking pictures. And even that gentleman in the back who was just sort of passing by and he's looking up. I liked all of those elements. But I was waiting. My foreground wasn't right because of those two people on the left who were jumbled up. So as they separated, as they walked, I ended up including them. Would I have liked if they were facing my way and pointing and looking up? Sure. But they weren't. And I was documenting. I wasn't setting it up. But this is the photograph, and I used a really clean, simple crop that made it so that it was just the background, and it was just those characters. And to me, that's a really good, simple technique to use to compose a tight photograph that has one thing well communicated. I don't think that uh, a lot of times when I see pictures of somebody who shot a, a beach or a mountain, there's no foreground. And so there's no sense of, well, it's just all background. And I think that the combination of putting like a, a flower in the foreground leading over to that mountain gives you a sense of depth because now there's a foreground and a background. I'm certainly not a nature guy, but that's certainly uh, a good example of how when you, whenever I see a background, the first thing I think of, well, what can I use for a foreground? I'll put a photo in the links below. I can think of one right now. I was at a Safeway shopping center supermarket coming out of a store in the next town over Longmont, Colorado with a cart full of, of groceries. And as I get to my car, the sky is the most glorious purple and red sky. And I didn't take any photographs because there's no photograph there. It's a bunch of electrical poles and light posts and cars and that's not a good foreground. So I left. And as I was driving back, I made a point of going by this one old farm and the light was still hanging in there. You only have that much time, but I was able to make it work. And this is a photograph I shot with a little Canon S95. It's a little small point and shoot camera, which is a good example that the camera doesn't matter. I've sold this photograph to people framed and it was because I added that foreground, that farm, became the foreground that made it work. And the sky was fantastic, but it just wouldn't have worked in the Safeway parking lot. Foreground and background, those are like the two main things. If you can find a great background, look for something to put in the middle and in front, something to bring the viewer closer to set it in context. If you see a good foreground, a character on the street, 
Well, what's behind them? Can you make any modifications to document them in a way that clears out the background and makes it a simpler background? Or a background that doesn't interfere with the story that the foreground is now telling? Simple little tricks, but those work really well to make your composition interesting and to make good photographs do one thing well. Not try to do a whole lot of things, just one foreground, one background, good composition, good clear story, you're a good storyteller. And that's what we are. Documentary photographers, we're storytellers. We're telling stories with pictures. We make it a good story. And I always use the example of editing as being so critical to a good story. I always use editing as an example of, I use editing as, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm repeating myself. That's what happens when you start showing doubles and triples of the same scene. And you didn't choose one. Choose one. The master storyteller doesn't say, I like all of these, I can't decide. Because that's like repeating yourself. The master storyteller says, I'm a good tight editor. I'll show you one, the best one, the one that I know. I'm the expert. I'll be the one who picks it for you so you will see which is the best because I've decided already. See how that's a difference? Good editors make good photographers. And the best photographers are good editors. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button, the Patreon, anything you can. I appreciate all your help. And some of the Patreon the latest contributors, thank you so much. I wanted to send a little shout out to you. And I appreciate you all coming back watching and I'll bring you more. Happy shooting. Here's the good light.